And now, Dr. Kraft, is pretty much when you get down to the final candidates that you want to be a part of this program, does it become, the training becomes sort of like their nine to five job, so to speak? That's what they're going to be focusing on from here on out? Yes, that's correct. So the 24 we will select, the first 24 will have a normal job which means they will be hired by us 100%ly and it's like in a company they have their vacations and, and they have the duty time except for three months in a year they will be in an isolated environment continuously where we test them um, what they learned during the other nine months during the year. However, as you said, some of them might find other reasons why they want to quit so we will have every year, every two year new selection to fill up the pool all the time that we don't run out of applicants for so that we will definitely now, one of the things that, that I know you've done is you worked on Team Dynamics mm -hmm. in the space program. Now, it's one thing for just a, maybe a, a, on the space station or just a limited duration space mission, but this is going to another planet forever. I mean, this is a, you're setting a long-term colony right there. So what sort of Team Dynamics changed from doing something that's a limited duration space expedition as opposed to this is long-term? Yeah, you, made, you made a very good point, and that is very different. So we cannot say you're good buddies, you go. That doesn't work. So really what I will give the applicants before they select, decide by themselves with whom they want to stay together, they have to know exactly what they like and what they don't like in another person. And we are talking about little things here. Uh, if the socks in the living room, if I hate that, it will explode sooner or later. If I don't like he wears no shirt around the room or he has to wash the dishes before night going or not, this makes it seems in our life little, but it becomes big when you have no escape of that. And all these little things they have to figure out, and I tell the applicants, think already about these little things you don't like, or you like, or you don't care, because you cannot endure it. It does not work. Sooner or later you will be just upset with this person, and that will decrease your performance as a team. And so we find the idiot teammates together, they work with each other. But in the end they select. So we are not telling them you are with this or this guy. They have to make their own selections. They will have a period where they can switch, but then they stay as a team of four. And they have to be clear, if one of them quits, the whole team have to start from zero because a new member will come in. And I know as part of the process, you're training them in sort of unanticipated problems during the whole process. That's what you've done before there. How, how do you determine like what is an unanticipated problem? How do you challenge, how would you potentially challenge these candidates with unanticipated problems? Uh, the point is more whatever you come up with a problem and you will see the challenges we give them has always a connection with reality. So not like, like other shows who just make a puzzle, a puzzle, a puzzle, which makes no sense. Why do they do a puzzle? <laughs> you know, it's always have a background thought. So we make emergency cases, we, we life support system is not working, solar panels are not working, uh, the spacesuit has a hole or whatever it is. So we are doing these scenarios for the real life experience, but also others, we deprive them of sensory. So you think how different you react if I just blindfold you? Everything becomes suddenly very different. And, and the connection, we look how they work in a group in this situation. And that's what we look most. Do they support each other? Do they ignore each other? Is the guy who talks a lot in the beginning just totally silent, doesn't help anybody anymore? So in these things, we're looking how they work as a team and how do they solve challenges. So we are not able to come up with all the challenges you might have in a mass, but we can look, can they solve challenges, whatever they are, when they come up. So what I say, expect the unexpected. So sometimes we put always some unexpected things in to see how they react to it. Now, certainly one thing that I think you react to, it's one thing for, you know, I guess to be uh, one of the, like Neil Armstrong going out on the moon, you're there for a limited time, but, and so there's the, a lot of stress in that mission. I mean, you're going into an environment that has zero atmosphere, uh, but Mars, I mean, that's a, that's a long-term, you know, the rest of your life that you'd potentially yeah. be spending there. That's, I would think that that's a day-to-day, -day daily stressor. I mean, is the human body capable of just, because the stress of everything that could possibly go wrong on another planet, you're dealing with those stresses day-to-day. -day. Is that something that it can, it is a challenge to overcome, or, or are you, what are you looking for in a candidate that could be able to potentially deal with those sort of stressors? Um, we will put them through a lot of challenges. And I said to applicants, what I hope to achieve is when they arrive on Mars and say, what well, Norway put us through Mars is a paradise in comparison to. But what excitement there is, and I think this is so beautiful, they build a new society. So we have to think about that. They really build their own constitution, their own laws, their own regulations, their own structures, and they build for the next crew. So the stresses is more, I should not forget to put my spacesuit on correctly when I go out. But inside the habitat, they have a 
not a peaceful life, but a happy life, hopefully. And you get a, a, in routine to it, so it's not that they are absolutely stressed. They're more stressed here because they think, will I be the person who goes or not? That keeps him a constant stressor, actually. So that makes it very different. I saw this with the Japanese. When we put the last seven in an isolation chamber, and we looked for three who become, they were very stressed out who will be selected or not. That was the biggest stress for them, mm. rather than everything else. And they changed very quickly, personality changed, and you see it clearly so. Isolation uh, makes the personal traits coming out very fast, and they try to hide it, it doesn't work. <laughs> so that's the fascinating thing about it. Now, how, how are you, I mean, you're going to be leaving your family, friends, everybody behind. Now, when you first told them, oh, your family and friends, like, I, I want to become involved in this, I have the potential to be one of the first people to go to Mars, how many, are people skeptical of this? Are people like, why are you doing this? Uh, there's been a lot of people who are, who've been, uh, yeah, disbelieving, I guess is one word. So I probably use, like, they don't think it's going to happen, or they or say, oh, I'm not going to let you go. Like, let's say things like that sometimes, <laughs> but. Uh, my dad has actually been very supportive. He's actually encouraged me to like, go to events like this, uh, to talk to people, about, to, like, give presentations. Uh, so I've done, like, two radio interviews. I did a presentation in Taiwan about, like, all these things that, Mars One is doing and like what I could possibly be doing as a part of this mission. So uh, yes, there is some skepticism, there is some resistance, but there's also some support too. Now, as Dr. Kraft said, I mean, you're going to be, if you were one of the first members to go, you're going to be starting a new civilization on another yeah. planet. So how does it feel, I mean, you, I mean, you could set up the whole rules of a whole new way of society over there. Does that excite you about those possibilities? It does actually. So uh, my master's degree was actually in uh, public administration uh, from the John Glenn School. And so I was like combining, like so my, one of my role models who has like these two traits, like you know policy and space. It's like oh my gosh, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> so now, is there any uh, quick thing you were saying? Like when I get to Mars, I'm gonna change it. This is how I want to work things about. Hopefully more egalitarian. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> so now the training aspect. I mean, you. I, I, what do you feel you bring already to the table that's going to help you get you get you a leg up in the training? And what do you think that you still need to focus on? Okay. So I mean, my uh, my undergrad background education is a geology degree from Brown. So I think, yes, I know that's only a bachelor's degree, and like I'm not specialized to know everything about Mars or how it it works. But I think it gives me at least a base to start from. Um, I say I'm physically fit enough to at least train more to like, endure some of the stressors of uh, space travel and those kind of things. And I, I say get along pretty well with people. Uh, all right. So now, uh, uh, potentially, you could be the Neil Armstrong of Mars. So <laughs> now, have you given any thought what your first words, if you're the first one out of the four, and you said put on Mars, have you thought about what your first words would be? I thought about them, but I don't think they're good yet. So we'll, we'll wait on that. Uh, all right. Yeah. Just, just give me a sample. What are you thinking? <laughs> there's a lot of pressure right now. Oh, all right, that, that could be yeah, the first yeah. one right there. Gosh, there's a lot of pressure right now. And that means that that's, that'll be it, right there. <laughs> all right, Ren, thank you so much right, for doing you. this. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Best of luck with everything. Thanks. Well, you look forward to seeing you yeah. on Mars. Oh. Yes, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, it would right. be. Right. We'll be right back in just a second, everybody. <laughs>